Welcome. This is Joey from DeepScopeRecords.com. Professional mixing and mastering. You can email me DeepScope at DeepScopeRecords.com if you have any questions about mixing or mastering or recording or, you know, such things surrounding tracking and recording and so forth. And uh, this is another one of our many lessons. And today I'm going to show you a neat little trick um, on what I do when... Um, when tracking vocals, sometimes, especially like with a mix such as this, with all these instruments in it, um, there, it's, there's very little, well, not very little, but it, it becomes kind of difficult for a vocalist when we're tracking vocals, sometimes to be able to hear themselves. It's very important um, for the, of course, for the vocalist to be able to hear themselves when they're singing and it needs to be clear. They need to be comfortable. Um, to be able to give a great performance and also it also helps it's kind of a rock and a hard place thing it also helps for them to hear everything that's going on in the mix so they can have last kind of last dibs on reacting to everything in the mix um and be able to give their best performance so they need to hear the whole mix and at the same time it's crucially important to hear themselves and sometimes you know no matter you don't want the headphones blaring you know your singer won't be able to concentrate on their voice it'll bleed too much into their microphones um and so how do you how do you strike that balance was it there's a little trick that you can do a couple little things that you can do to kind of help you with that so you're not fighting just volume so this is what i do this is our mix let's say we're we're ready to um we're ready to do vocals the final vocals so what we're gonna do is i like to put my um these are my stems i like to put and there's a video on on uh mixing into stems and i'll show you what that at deepscorebreakers.com where we show you why we do that but um i like to put my vocal kind of at the end of all the instruments so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit command shift n or control shift then if you're on a PC. And we are going to want, believe it or not, for our vocals, we are going to want two mono tracks. And then we are also going to want two mono audio tracks. Very important, two mono audio tracks. And we're going to want one stereo aux input. Go ahead and create those. And what we're going to do, we're going to label those. And the first one is just is going to be our vocal. Oops. We'll call this um, vocal tracking, I guess. Sounds good. And then the second one is going to be, we'll just call that um, vocal scrap. Because we're going to use it, but we're not going to need it in the end. And then the third one, as I hit command right arrow to go to the next track, that's going to be, we'll call that a uh, Vox track reverb, Vox track verb. Okay. And so what we're going to do here, let's go ahead and expand this, make these big. You can see what we're doing. And to clear things up, we can also, we'll hide this. Matter of fact, we'll go ahead and we'll hide everything, but we'll keep it active. So now we can just focus right here on our vocal. So these are our three new vocal tracks. Vox tracking, Vox scrap, Vox tracking verb. So now this one, this first one, this is going to be the main track that we record into. This is going to be what I call the second one's going to be what I call a support track. And then we're also going to be able to set up if you're in Pro Tools LE. Um, and I'm pretty sure Pro Tools 9 as well, which is a Pro Tools 9. You can't record. Actually, I know Pro Tools 9 you can't. You can't record and have um, effects at the same time. But there's a way you can get around that, and I'm going to show you how. So this is our main vocal track. So we're going to set that up and make sure that we got set set up coming in mic line 1. We're not going to arm that just yet. And this second one, believe it or not, we are also going to put mic line 1. 
and we're going to arm them both. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be recording in two tracks at the same time. Now, if we were, and what we're going to do is we are going to bring this first one, your main tracking up by between 6 and 7 dB. That just depends on the singer. And we're going to make that one louder than the rest. You don't want any clipping or anything. But if you do that, it's not going to, it's not going to raise your tracking level. But you can, you can increase your volume here and it won't affect the level that you're tracking at. And the second one, we are going to bring way down. Now, if we left both of these equal, you would have this weird kind of strange chorus effect. It'll throw your singer off. What that is, is that's, um, that's some phase cancellation. So we want to bring this down. And the principle of this is that let's say that you're playing something in this track. If you have the same thing playing in a second track, it's going to be twice as loud. So if we bring this one louder, and we bring this one way down, this second track is kind of just introducing a little more volume to the mix. So you're getting a little more volume on the same vocal without having that weird phase cancellation. So we're going to record into both of these at the same time. And you can just leave, leave them straight up. You don't want to do any weird things where your vocalist is hearing different things left and right. 